Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation. In this short presentation, you'll learn the basic settings needed for making power versus frequency measurements using a spectrum analyzer. Let's begin with a simple question. What do spectrum analyzers do? Spectrum analyzers are frequency domain instruments, that is, they show power versus frequency. This is also the most fundamental measurement on a spectrum analyzer, a plot of power versus frequency. Most spectrum analyzers also automate certain power versus frequency type measurements, like AM modulation depth, throat order intercept, etc. These measurements could be done manually, but automating them increases efficiency and accuracy. Other measurements, like occupied bandwidth, adjacent channel leakage ratio, etc., would be difficult or impossible to manually measure. Vector signal demodulation and analysis allow us to look into the structure and content of signals, like LTE, 5G, Wi-Fi, etc. In this presentation, however, we're going to limit ourselves to the basic power versus frequency measurements that can be made with any spectrum analyzer, and what you learn in this presentation will apply to just about every make and model of spectrum analyzer. We're going to concentrate on the four essential parameters needed to operate a spectrum analyzer. These four parameters are center and span, reference level, resolution bandwidth, and video bandwidth. These settings are used when making almost any kind of spectrum measurement. The very first question you have to answer when making spectrum measurements is, what frequency range am I interested in? In other words, what are the start and stop frequencies? Let's say we're interested in measuring power between 840 and 860 megahertz. We could enter these values into a spectrum analyzer as start and stop frequencies. But most people who use spectrum analyzers on a regular basis enter these values a different way, namely as center and span. The names are fairly self-explanatory. Center is the center frequency in the middle of the display, and span is the width of the display. The range 840 to 860 MHz is the same as a center of 850 MHz and a span of 20 MHz. Most often we know the center frequency of our signal of interest, and using span it's easier to zoom in and zoom out, just increase or decrease the span. The next step is defining something called the reference level. Reference level is the top edge of our display and represents the maximum expected power at the spectrum analyzer input. In most cases, we adjust our reference level so the highest level of our signal is slightly below this level. We want to avoid setting the level either too low or too high. Setting the reference level too high decreases our dynamic range and our ability to see small changes in amplitude. What happens if we set our reference level too low? In addition to causing the trace to poke above the top of the screen, setting the reference level too low can also affect our measurement results. Why? Behind the RF input, some of the first sections of our spectrum analyzer include active components like mixers and amplifiers. If the input level is too high, these devices can go into something called compression, which creates distortion and negatively impacts our measurement results, sometimes very severely. To prevent this from happening, a variable input attenuator is placed between the RF input and these sensitive components. When we set the reference level, this value is used by our spectrum analyzer to adjust the input attenuation and or the IF amplifier gain in order to avoid overloading the instrument. Our next setting is resolution bandwidth. For basic spectrum measurements, resolution bandwidth is by far the most important setting. Most spectrum analyzers use the so-called heterodyne principle to measure spectrum by sweeping across the span. The trace showing power versus frequency is drawn from left to right, usually repeatedly. One way to understand resolution bandwidth is to think of it as a window that moves across our span, measuring the level as it goes. This concept of a moving window can be helpful in understanding how swept spectrum analyzers work and what resolution bandwidth is. In reality, however, our resolution bandwidth filter, or window, isn't actually square, but has a Gaussian or similar shape. The window also doesn't move. We slide the spectrum past the window instead of the other way around, in part because it would be extremely difficult to build a tunable filter that could sweep across wide frequency ranges. The end result is the same, and many RF engineers do think of resolution bandwidth as a moving window, or filter, that sweeps across a span. Next, let's examine two ways that resolution bandwidth plays a critical role in spectrum analysis, namely 
separating signals and noise. Let's start with signal separation. As the name implies, one of the things that resolution bandwidth affects is our ability to separate or resolve closely spaced signals. For example, if we have two narrow signals, we can only separate them if our resolution bandwidth is smaller than the distance between these two signals. If we were to use a wider resolution bandwidth, both tones are covered by the filter as it sweeps past, and they appear as a single signal in our trace. The other important aspect of resolution bandwidth is the effect that it has on noise. More specifically, resolution bandwidth affects the noise floor, also referred to as the displayed average noise level, or DANL. The noise floor rises or falls depending on the chosen resolution bandwidth. Let's look at what happens to the noise floor as we decrease resolution bandwidth. We'll use a simple CW signal and a rather large span of 2 GHz. With a resolution bandwidth of 3 MHz, the average value of the noise floor is approximately minus 73 dBm. Narrowing the resolution bandwidth to 300 kHz drops the noise floor to minus 84 dBm. At a resolution bandwidth of 30 kHz, the noise floor falls again to minus 93 dBm, and at a resolution bandwidth equals to 3 kHz, the noise floor has an average value of minus 104 dBm. You may have noticed that decreasing the resolution bandwidth by a factor of 10 reduces the noise floor by about 10 dB. As a practical matter, if we want to see signals close to the noise floor, we should use narrower resolution bandwidths. Lowering the resolution bandwidth provides better signal separation and lower noise, so why not always use the lowest possible resolution bandwidth? Remember that our resolution bandwidth is essentially a filter, and narrower filters take a longer time to settle, or get a stable result, compared to wider filters. This means that we have to sweep more slowly when using smaller resolution bandwidths in order to get accurate results. Sweeping too quickly leads to both amplitude and frequency errors. In fact, the main factor determining the sweep time of a spectrum analyzer is the resolution bandwidth. So what's the right sweep time? The good news is that most analyzers automatically compute sweep time based on resolution bandwidth and span. You can override this setting but decreasing the automatically calculated sweep time is usually not a good idea. How do we know which resolution bandwidth to use? The optimal resolution bandwidth is almost entirely a function of the signal being measured, and often has to be determined by experimentation. Remember also that there's a trade-off between speed and selectivity slash noise. If we decrease resolution bandwidth, this will increase our selectivity, that is, our ability to separate or resolve closely spaced signals. Narrowing resolution bandwidth also drops the noise floor, making it easier to see weak signals. But as we've seen, the time needed to sweep a given span increases rapidly as we decrease resolution bandwidth. In other words, small resolution bandwidths lead to very long, perhaps unacceptably long, sweep times. One final note. On most spectrum analyzers, you can't choose any arbitrary value for resolution bandwidth, but you have to select it in certain steps. For example, 1 kHz, 3 kHz, 10 kHz, 30 kilohertz, etc. The last basic parameter is called video bandwidth. In order to better understand video bandwidth, we first need to explain what we mean by a video signal. The traces that we've been looking at in this presentation are essentially an envelope of the power at individual frequencies, and this envelope is called the video signal. Why video? In the old days, this signal was applied to the vertical deflection of a cathode ray tube, in order to draw a video trace on the screen. In modern spectrum analyzers, video bandwidth is a type of filter used to average or smooth out the display trace. One very important thing to remember is that video bandwidth only affects how the signal is displayed, not the way that it's measured or acquired. This is unlike resolution bandwidth, so be sure not to confuse the two. Let's take a closer look at an example of what happens as we lower video bandwidth. At a video bandwidth of 200 kHz, we can see a fair amount of noise on our signal. This noise is reduced when we lower video bandwidth to 20 kHz, and decreases even further when video bandwidth is lowered to only 2 kHz. Lowering the video bandwidth only reduces the noise on the trace. It doesn't drop the noise floor like resolution bandwidth, and it also doesn't improve our ability to resolve or separate closely spaced signals. So how do we choose our video bandwidth? Video bandwidth only changes what the trace looks like, so to a certain extent the correct video bandwidth setting depends on the application. 
That said, most modern spectrum analyzers will automatically configure and update video bandwidth based on other parameters like resolution bandwidth. In many cases, a smaller or narrower video bandwidth might seem desirable since it reduces noise on the trace. But just like resolution bandwidth, video bandwidth does have an effect on the sweep time. The smaller or narrower the video bandwidth, the longer the sweep time. In this presentation, we've covered the four most important basic spectrum analyzer parameters. The first of these are center and span, which define the frequency range that we're interested in. Next, we specify the reference level, which should be slightly higher than the maximum expected power value. Aside from keeping the trace in the display, reference level also helps the analyzer choose appropriate values for input attenuation and gain. Although it's not usually hard to decide which values to use for center, span, and reference level, Choosing resolution bandwidth involves making some trade-offs. Lower resolution bandwidths help separate closely spaced signals and reduce the noise floor or DANL, but they also increase sweep time. Video bandwidth, on the other hand, doesn't affect signal resolution or noise floor, but merely allows you to smooth or filter the displayed trace. Although these are the four most common parameters used in spectrum analysis, there are many other useful parameters. These will be covered in separate presentations. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation. Thanks for watching.